Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Games Telecom video, we're going to be discussing two pieces of news. The so first of which is NVIDIA's GeForce GT 1030, the final specifications for the card, have found their way onto the internet. And finally, we're going to discuss Microsoft and their trademark of Direct Physics, which is being touted as Physics for DirectX 12, which is... Well, opening up a lot of interesting possibilities, not just for, of course, the PC, but also for the Xbox as well. But first of all, let's go through a quick update of the GeForce at GT 1030. Thank you to the viewer who sent this over on Facebook, who wished to remain anonymous, but he sent over a link for a website by the name of El Chapasin Informatico, probably pronounced that incorrectly, however... We have final pictures and specifications of a KFA2 GeForce GT 1030. Now, there are a couple of interesting clarifications actually we have for this particular graphics card. Predominantly, the specifications. So most of the other stuff of the card appears to be pretty accurate from what we've heard previously. The main difference, the GP108, which is the graphics core, of course, which is featured on the GT1030, was early reported to have 512 cores, CUDA cores, um, but that does not seem to be the case, at least according to this website. We have just 384, which is, well, kind of paltry. However, it does boost up to 15. 106 megahertz and that's with a 64-bit wide interface and of course ships with either two or four gigabytes of gddr5 memory yes this card is not going to set the world alight with only 48 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth but early reports are that it's roughly on par with something like a gt um, a gtx 750 tie which means it's not that bad considering that it only has a tdp of 30 watts which is pretty, pretty tiny. Obviously, this is not going to be something you're going to be wanting to play Quake on. Quite frankly, this is probably going to be a card which is just about okay for something like Dota or, you know, maybe Counter-Strike, that type of thing. The only slight concern I have with this GPU is this particular model, which is once again the KFA2, is being reported to cost 80 euros or between 60 and 80 US dollars for the GT 1030, which honestly is quite expensive. I wouldn't say it's a rip-off or anything like that. Those are way too strong a words. But I think that this part of the market, at this segment of the market, spending just like 20 or $30 more, you can get an awful lot of extra performance. So personally, I would point out that even something like a GTX 1050 only costs about 100 Great British Pounds are around the equivalent in your regional currency, which means it's not that much more and you get an awful lot of extra performance. Or, of course, you could go with like an RX 550 or a 560, and they're probably going to be better cards overall. But if you do need a GPU which has a really low uh, TDP and obviously, you know, very small form factor, that type of stuff, then this potentially could be the card for you. Obviously, it also has limitations on display ports, that type of stuff. It doesn't have an internal power connector. And I won't go for the phases and stuff like that because, quite frankly, it's not that interesting. It's only a two-phase design from what I can understand. Basically, this is a Pascal, but the mini Pascal. It's the tiniest Pascal that you ever did see. Perhaps one of the more interesting things that actually flew under a lot of radars. Actually, I kind of forgot about this, if I'm totally honest. Um, happened back in 2015. And Microsoft acquired Havoc. If you're not too familiar with Havoc, they are a company which are pretty predominant in the gaming industry. They put out middleware for physics, which of course is pretty in instrumental in modern day gaming. At the time, a press release was, well, released. And it said, and I quote, We believe that Havoc is a fantastic addition to Microsoft's existing tools and platform components for developers, including DirectX 12, Visual Studio and Microsoft Azure. In quote. Well, if you were to take a look at the calendar, that's about a year and a half ago, roughly. So now Microsoft have trademarked Direct Physics. We're pretty close to E3 2017, as you probably are aware, painfully by now, might I add. Direct Physics is going to be very interesting for the industry for numerous reasons. 
And based upon these rumours, I don't want to do a full tech analysis because obviously we don't quite know the extent of what this is going to offer. But just off the top of my head, well, on Scorpio side of things, we have the DirectX 12 integrated into the command processor of the Scorpio uh, Scorpio's GPU. So that's going to be interesting to see how that all occurs. Secondly, it's going to put Microsoft into perhaps a little bit of uh, a slap fest, potentially, with NVIDIA. Obviously, NVIDIA are very keen to push PhysX, which it bought from Aegis back in the day. That would be quite interesting, because obviously the issue with, well, PhysX is it's quite a black box. It obviously is very difficult to get into, to, Mike, to NVIDIA's credit. They have somewhat opened things up. AMD have made some inroads to physics as well. So there's that. The other problem, well, not problem, but obviously you also have the contention of Vulcan. Plus, it's going to be very interesting how games utilize this if you then go over cross-platform. What I mean by that, let's take the PC out of the equation. Let's take the PC, put it into the corner a second, and talk exclusively about consoles. I know that's probably swear words to some of you, but still, it's just a lot easier sometimes to take out other platforms. I'm curious how portable this would be. Would this be difficult for portability? Would developers actually want to use this? Uh, for example, let's say that you're, I don't know, um, you're Ubisoft or whomever else, and you're producing a game. How easy would it be to port this particular appy over... Um, for the PS4, would it be difficult? Presumably, maybe not. We don't know. I'm assuming there's going to be portability tools that are created. At the end of the day, I'm being kind of ambiguous because, frankly, we just don't have enough news. It just brings a lot of questions. I don't have any problems with it. I don't feel that Microsoft are trying to crush the industry or anything like that. I do have concerns on how this is going to work. Um, mostly from a portability standpoint... I feel that Microsoft kind of want to produce something which is more industry standard, which, to be fair, is a problem, because obviously you've got some physics which just do not work if you've got an AMD GPU with hardware physics from NVIDIA. To be honest, my personal opinion, I feel that NVIDIA kind of bit themselves in the ass with that. They shot themselves in the foot. Because in my personal opinion, they should have made it so that they could have, you could have used physx on in AMD GPUs. Admittedly, it might they might have done it so with an asterisk there that said something like you know you don't get as better, as good performance. We can't we can't promise that you won't get visual artifacting. It runs best on Nvidia. I would have been a hundred percent behind that. The reason I say that Nvidia bit themselves in the in the butt is because, well, it basically meant that the the platform just never really got established. It, you know, developers were like, well, do I really want to produce something which potentially would not work on someone's computer? Yeah, some games do look really good on it, I will not lie. Like, if you look at certain games, um, let's talk about Batman. I think Batman Arkham looks really cool with it. Uh, Alice looks really awesome with it. There are a few other games as well, but, you know, this isn't the time for that. The problem is the you know, it just, it never really took hold how it should have. And that's just kind of the problem with hardware physics with NVIDIA. So maybe if Microsoft do this and offer this as a potential solution, who knows? It could potentially mean that, you know, if you've got an AMD GPU, you could have advanced physics. And potentially that could be good for the industry because obviously if more people can work on the technology and you could have, you know, more stuff appearing on GitHub or whatever... That's obviously a positive. Anyway, I guess we're just going to have to see how open-ended this is, how uh, portable it is in terms of other ecosystems, and, well, you know, what it even offers developers. But with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.